And Shanghai still wasn't deep enough, wide enough, or big enough to let those ships come in. Problems competing ports like Hong Kong and Singapore didn't have. As China's economy exploded, everyone wanted a piece of the action. If Shanghai couldn't handle the business, it would have gone elsewhere. 2002, Shanghai's leaders roll the dice on a bold solution. At a place called Yangshan, 32 kilometers offshore, where the water was 15 to 20 meters deep. Today, Yangshan is a large island that can easily accommodate a world-class container port. But when Shanghai's engineers chose it, over 60% of it didn't exist. Yangshan was just what nature made it, a collection of tiny islands, with no room for anything but a fishing village. Engineers considered creating flat land by leveling the hills, but decided against destroying Yangshan's natural topography. Instead, they decided to build the world's biggest container port virtually from scratch. Yangshan port is this enormous deep water project that was built kind of on a fresh sheet of paper, the biggest possible piece of infrastructure that they could possibly build to stamp Shanghai's kind of dominance over container shipping. The plan called for a true megastructure, a 20 kilometer key where 50 ships could dock at one time and a port that could process 25 million shipping containers in one year, 70,000 in just one day. Price tag, an estimated 18 billion US dollars. 2002, construction begins on Yangshan phase one. Engineers begin transforming these lonely islets into the world's biggest container port. It's like trying to, to you know, tie a, a butterfly knot in, a, in, a, in the middle of a raging river. You've got water that's flowing two meters a second. These guys are up against uh, typhoon, bad weather, fog. You know, they're 35 kilometers offshore. There's no power, there's no water. There's probably more inhospitable locations, but there certainly isn't a, a tougher location to work in for such a big project. Failure is not an option, and neither is delay. Shanghai's container traffic is growing by 30% every year. To build Yangshan, engineers must create an artificial island with a 10 square kilometer port, bigger than 20,000 basketball courts, in ocean 15 meters deep. And that will take thousands of millions of cubic meters of soil. How do you get it? Enter the Sea Dragon, the Mega Dredge. Built in the Netherlands to clear Shanghai's monumental silt, this is a dredge like no other. When the Sea Dragon swings into action, you can see how it got its name. Its two massive suction arms bear an uncanny resemblance to monsters of the deep. Ocean floor mud as deep as 45 meters can't escape their jaws. And they don't just eat a lot, they eat fast, thanks to some mega power topside. In the belly of this beast, 
Two turbocharged 12-cylinder diesel engines generate 9,000 kilowatts of power each. With that kind of power, the Sea Dragon only needs to pump one hour to fill its hopper with mud. In China, eight is a lucky number. So the Sea Dragon's hopper holds 12,888 cubic meters. That's over 200,000 kegs of beer. Once the hopper's full, Two gigantic pumps drain the water from over 12,000 cubic meters of mud. And Captain Yan says that when it's time to deliver the payload, his dredge leads the pack. Older ships can only dump sand, but the sea dragon can blow or spray it. That gives it a real advantage over other ships on the construction site. The Sea Dragon worked almost a full year just to build Phase 1. Dumping 3,000 million cubic meters of mud. Enough to fill over a million Olympic swimming pools. growing a man-made island in ocean over 15 meters deep. The Sea Dragon's done its job. For now. But there are still two more phases of Yangshan to build. And they'll need 13 billion cubic meters of mud, enough to fill Loch Ness. Turning open sea into 10 square kilometers of world-class container port in under four years is pretty impressive. But Yangshan only proves itself when the world's biggest container ships come to call. Now, one of the biggest, the Gudrun Maersk, is ready to unload. And the port of Yangshan has to unload her 3,000 containers, reload her with 2,000 more, and send her on her way in just 20 hours. Over those 20 hours, Yangshan's state-of-the-art technology and the people who run and manage it must once again show the shipping world that they're among the best. Because in this high-stakes world, no matter how good you are, you're only as good as your last ship. Twelve noon. Unloading the Gudrun Maersk begins. Three thousand shipping containers in less than 20 hours. Every hour behind schedule costs thousands of dollars. and takes you down a notch in the eyes of the shipping world. Only the best can pull this off. And Yangshan Deepwater Port has 13 of them. The STS-40 shipped ashore crane, 50 meters high. That's as tall as the fabled Godzilla and they're manufactured right in the neighborhood at the Zhenhua Company on Chungshing Island at the mouth of the Yangtze, only 125 kilometers from Yangshan, the biggest crane factory in the world. But even at this mega factory where mountains of metal seem to float on air, the Yangshan cranes were a tall order. Most container cranes can lift one 40-foot container at a time, or two 20-foot ones. 
Yang Shan needed cranes that could lift twice that many and stand tall enough to reach them from atop the world's biggest ships. And it needed 13 of them. General Manager Lu Hanjong recalls the excitement of winning the Yangshan contract and the anxiety of fulfilling it. Designing and manufacturing cranes this big was a challenge for us because ships are getting bigger and higher. Cranes have to be bigger too. We couldn't simply make one of our smaller cranes twice as big. That crane would have been far too heavy to build. We needed to change the design of the whole structure. But one of the toughest challenges to giving Yangshan its super cranes wasn't building them. When they arrive at container ports, new cranes can need up to six months reassembly before they are ready to operate but not Zhen Hua's cranes. They come with no assembly required. Shipped around the world on Zhen Hua's specially modified freighters. But Zhen Hua's ships had never transported cranes as tall and heavy as the ones ordered by Yangshan. The cranes couldn't be any shorter or lighter or Yang Shan wouldn't beat its competition. There was only one option, solve the problem. We successfully designed a bigger crane which doesn't add much to its own weight, but can still do the job it's designed to do. And we designed them so they can lower their height while they're being transported. Problem solved, cranes designed, built and delivered. Now they're putting Yangshan ahead of the pack. Most container port cranes can handle about 30 containers an hour. Yangshan's cranes can handle more than 50. Thanks to crane drivers like Zhang Yi, who've made a commitment to being the best. The difficulty we have to conquer is we work on night and day shifts rather than normal working hours, so that we have to sacrifice a bit, personal life-wise. I mean, we cannot just go drinking and have fun as much as we want to. We have to make sure we rest well before we come to work. Driving a container port crane is like fishing for a prize in a carnival game except the prize weighs two and a half tons, and that's empty. Sitting in a cab meters up, the operator has to maneuver the crane's lifter, called a spreader, into position over each container, then lower it by eye and by hand. When the spreader's in place, he triggers the spreader's automated locks that grip the container and hoists it up and over the deck onto the dock below. Lining it up precisely with the truck that will carry it away. And then do it again and again and again. And if you think unloading is tough, try loading. To load a ship, a crane operator has to position a 20-foot container onto pins on deck and slide it precisely into grooves built into the cargo hold so containers won't move at sea. That's like trying to set an elephant down on a coin from 50 meters up. And a crane driver doesn't have all day to get it right. If containers move too slowly, ship owners fall behind schedule and lose money. But if they move too fast, they can swing out of control, endangering cargoes, people and cranes. And a bumped container could mean damaged goods inside. So crane drivers have to develop an instinct for loading and unloading at exactly the right speed. 
The cranes put the containers onto trucks, which move them from the dock to the container yard.